Okay, <clears throat> so we've done test two. So now we're moving on to the next section, the next topic, <coughs> which is the flexure formula. So uh, let's just continue in our notes. We're, you know, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to stay on schedule, go through our notes, talk about topic like we would do if we were in class. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about internal moments. Remember uh, when we would uh, take a beam and we would cut it. Uh, we would find the N, we would find the V, we would find the M. We would find the internal N, V, and M. And so here's my question. What stress does the internal moment M cause? What stress does that internal moment M cause? We know the internal normal force causes normal stress, and it's just N over A, and it's uniform over that cross-sectional area. Uh, but we haven't talked about V and M, and so first we're going to talk about M. The internal moment, it causes a stress, uh, and I bet we could figure that out. Let's imagine that we drew <clears throat> a pink line on this beam. Uh, so imagine I've got my pool noodle right here, and I draw a pink line, let's say it's four inches. Right, that pink line is four inches. Uh, I draw a blue line that is also four inches, and I draw a green line that is four inches. <clears throat> so I've got three lines that are all four inches. <clears throat> what would happen if we apply a positive moment to it? What would happen to this pool noodle if I applied a positive moment to it? And let me really exaggerate it. I would really exaggerate it. And it, it the pool noodle would almost uh, deform into a smiley face. Right, you know, this pool noodle will curve upward uh, into like a smiley face due to an internal moment. So, what would those three lines do? How would those three lines change? Well, they might. So, so let's say this is uh, all three of those lines are four inches. If we bend, curve this a positive moment, kind of making a smiley face. Those three lines, let me try to draw what, what I think would happen to those three lines. Those three lines would, would kind of curve like this. Here's the blue line, and here's the green line. <coughs> and so this pink line, it was four inches. It, it might only be about three inches now. Can you imagine that? Can you visualize that? This blue line in the middle of our beam, it was four inches. It is still four inches. All right? <clears throat> and this green line, uh, maybe it's about five inches. Uh, don't you think that's what would happen? The lines at the top half of the beam would compress, right? The lines at the bottom half would elongate an internal moment can cause compression above the neutral axis and um, t elongation below the neutral axis. I was about to skip ahead too much. So let's write that down. An internal moment <clears throat> can cause, uh, let's say, change in length, change in length, of axial lines, let's say above and below, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and call this the neutral axis, uh, lines that are above and below the middle, uh, but it doesn't have to be the middle, it's really the neutral axis that we'll talk about, right? So a moment... <clears throat> causes delta L of those lines. It causes normal axial normal strain. It causes a delta L over L. So I don't know if that, I think that makes sense right there. So if it causes the delta L, it's really causing normal stress. That's all I was trying to illustrate, that an internal moment 
causes normal stress. An internal moment leads to sigma, normal stress. <coughs> Why? But what is normal stress? It's either a compression or a tension, right? It's either compression or tension. Now, the normal stress caused by N is uniform, and if it's in tension, it's tension at the top, tension at the bottom, tension in the middle. It's a uniform, whatever that stress is, it's distributed uniformly. But with the moment, it's kind of interesting, a positive moment like a smiley face, there's compression on the top, there's tension on the bottom, and it varies, it varies, and there's nothing at the neutral axis. <coughs> How much does it vary? Well, let's draw this right here. If we have a positive moment, if we have a positive moment, then this bottom part of it will elongate the most, right? But then this part of it might elongate a little bit. This part might elongate a little bit. This part towards the middle, it doesn't elongate. And over here, the top compresses the most, um, but this compresses a little bit, this compresses a little bit. It turns out to be a linear uh, distrib distribution of the normal stress and a linear distribution of the strain. All right, it is linear. All right, <clears throat> so it's linear stress, linear that was strain and linear stress, and it is zero at the neutral axis. The neutral axis is, you could kind of think about it as the middle of the cross-sectional area, uh, but it's technically at where the centroid of the cross-sectional area is. So neutral axis is through the centroid of the cross-sectional area. Okay, so let's draw, so yeah, if you looked ahead, you know, a moment, internal moment causes normal stress. And let's get an equation for that. <clears throat> let's get an equation for that. The normal stress is important. This is the most important equation of this section. The normal stress is the moment, right, the internal moment. Let me not do this. Brackets. The internal moment times the distance away from the neutral axis divided by I. Let's talk about this. Here's our equation for normal stress, my over I. Not too bad to memorize. It's actually on your formula sheet, but I hope you'll memorize it. The normal stress caused by an internal moment is my over I. Does this make sense? That... <clears throat> The larger the M, then the larger the stress, right? The larger the magnitude of the M at that cut, then the larger the stress. The larger the Y. What is the Y? Y is the distance away from the neutral axis. Y is the distance away from the neutral axis. Okay, and what the book does... <coughs> is the book says we're going to measure y up. Positive is up. Uh, and that's why the book has this negative right here. They say negative my over i. I sometimes I don't put that negative. <coughs> I like to visualize it and put that negative in myself, whether I know it's compression or tension, just based on a positive moment. But technically, negative my over i M is the internal moment. Y is the distance away from the neutral axis. Positive if it's above the neutral axis. Negative if it's below the neutral axis. And I, uh, we talked about in statics, it is the area moment of inertia. It is the area moment of inertia. This is not the mass moment of inertia that we do in dynamics. This is the area moment of inertia that we do in statics. This is the 
it, it's basically a measure of the amount of area and how far away it is from the neutral axis. So the larger the area you have and the further it is away from your neutral axis, then the larger your eye. The larger your eye, right? Think about this, the larger your eye, then the, there's less stress. So objects that have a cross-sectional area that has <coughs> more area away from the neutral axis, there's less stress due to a moment than, <coughs> than a, a different cross-sectional area. So this is the area moment of inertia, and this is about the neutral axis. This is about the neutral axis. All right, so, so the system is why. Um, now you've got to kind of um, specify, okay, what point do I want to know the stress? Do I want to know the stress at right, right here? So then my Y would be negative, you know, is it three millimeters? How far is that point? Do I want to know the stress up here at the outer edge? How far is that? So that Y uh, depends on what point you want to know uh, the stress because now the stress is not uniform. The stress is different at every um, different at every uh, <coughs> location on that cross-sectional area. Okay, the book will say m negative m y over i, and and you should do negative m y over i if you're very very careful with the sign of your m. Right. And the internal M, remember how we use positive sign convention for internal moments, um, and be very careful about the sign of your Y. Uh, up above the neutral axis is a positive Y, below the neutral axis is a negative Y. Uh, personally, I um, just memorize and visualize a positive moment. All right, a positive moment, a positive moment leads to, and I just bend that pool noodle, I really exaggerate that bend of the pool noodle, <clears throat> and that's my positive moment. So for a positive moment, anything below the neutral axis is tension, uh, and anything above the neutral axis is compression. D did you get that? For a positive moment, <clears throat> visualize a pool noodle that is bent into a smiley face. Anything at the bottom half, uh, it's in tension. Anything the top half is in compression. Imagine you put your finger it kind of in that pool noodle. If you put it at the top, your finger would get pinched. It would get compressed. So that's the way I, I and I um, specify positive or negative myself. But the book says negative M Y over I. But be very careful about the M sign of your M. Very careful about the sign of your Y. Okay, we this Y. <coughs> And this I, they really depend on where the centroid is, where the neutral axis is, and the neutral axis is at the centroid. So let's review from statics calculating the centroid. So the neutral axis acts through the centroid of my cross-sectional area. of my beam. Now, if we are lucky, maybe it's just a rectangle. Like, so if that's what the cross-sectional area looks like, if I'm looking down the barrel of the, the, um, the beam, then my neutral axis is, is just right here, right? My neutral axis is just right, right there. Um, <clears throat> if it is symmetric, so maybe it's an I-beam and maybe the top and the bottom of the I-beam are perfectly symmetric, right? Anything that is symmetric, the neutral axis is, is in the middle, down the line of symmetry. All right, but uh, be able to calculate centroids of U-beams. Um, and I'm going to exaggerate this, but I-beams that are not symmetric, we've got to calculate the neutral axis. Now, occasionally... Um, if it's a specific shape, sometimes in the back of the book, for a specific shape of an I-beam or a U-beam, the neutral axis will be given for you. Uh, but I want you to be able to calculate the neutral axis of, um, of cross-sectional areas. I like to do these by um, just breaking it up into rectangles. All right? Maybe I've got 
one, two, three, and it's a composite body. Do you remember composite bodies in um, statics? Can you find the centroid of a composite body? I will review <clears throat> real quickly the um, review of centroids of composite bodies. Uh, we're, we're really only interested in the y location of the centroid. Uh, most all of these are symmetric in the x direction, um, and, and the x direction doesn't really matter <coughs> because the we want the y, the my over i, so we need to know where the y location of the centroid is. So it is the summation of, you remember, summation of y tilde o times a divided by summation of a. Uh, remember, it's like you take the centroid of shape 1 times the area of shape 1 plus the centroid of shape 2 times the area of shape 2 plus the centroid of shape 3, the area of shape 3, um, divided by uh, a1, a, the, the summation of all, the, the total area, right, divided by the total area. It's really a weighted average, right, it's a weighted average. Let's do an example of a centroid.